May I have your attention, please? Oh, hello. I didn't see you standing there. I was just pondering about how, in the future, technological advances are going to help improve the lives of students in Notre Dame. Well, you know, Michael. Whoa. As a group, we understand that advances in technology have increased the volume and efficiency of communications and also increased the ability of students to multitask in Notre Dame. However, we feel there is a dark side to technology that has decreased the quality of communications among students. To test our hypothesis, we performed student observations, conducted a student survey, and also interviewed three separate professors to find out what's going on here at Notre Dame. Today is April 2nd, we are outside the Bartolo on this gorgeous day, and we just asked people to walk by whether or not they could live without their cell phones for 24 hours. And here's what they had to say. I had to over spring break. Bro. You had to? How was it? It's kind of nice. It's kind of nice? Yeah. Like it? It's kind of a pain. Or like sometimes, but yeah. I mean, so it's, it's a little refreshing, especially when you're on vacation. Yeah? yeah. Have you done it? Yeah. Yeah? I, I, I like didn't even like use my cell phone. Yeah, definitely. Yeah? Have you yeah. tried it? Or have you have you had to before? No, I haven't. Yeah. No? No. Yes. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. In my personal experience, I've learned to deal without such things. Yeah, that'd be tough. I don't know if I could do it, but um, I've done it before for, uh, for like a week, so. Okay. Yeah. So you think you could do it again? Oh, uh, yeah. Over spring break, we were camping in the mountains. I had no access to my cell phone for a week, and it was actually amazing. <laughs> all right. All right. Do you want to give me your cell phone? I'll take it. <laughs> um, I don't think so. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> Well, as a matter of fact, I was, I noticed I forgot to bring it up here, and that was kind of darn. That sometimes people invade your um, your kind of interactional space when you don't want them to, and the perfect example is when you go to a store and you're trying to browse, and the salespeople who are on commission keep coming up to you and bugging you. Well, what's the best way to fend them off? I've discovered, just hold the phone up to your ear, you know, and they they'll leave you alone. And you don't have to be on the phone, but you know, you just, as soon as you see them coming, just put it up, and they leave you alone. And so, you know, so, so there, there's actually ways of using this to, to make your life better, too, and not just, uh, you know, we don't always want to engage with everybody who wants to engage with us. It's increasing the volume of communication that we have with people. It's also a lot easier to send stuff to multiple people. You don't have to make 10 phone calls to send something to 10 people. You just send it and it goes to 10 people. Mm -hmm. So the volume is increasing. Now, what about the quality? There's all kinds of cues that you don't get. Uh, right now, I'm gesticulating while I'm talking to you, and that's that's adding something to the communication. I'm, you know, I'm changing my facial expression. There's a lot going on. Even on the phone, at least you get the tone of voice, and there's inflection and things that are part of our language that aren't captured in email and people try to find ways to do that with the little happy faces and things you know to try to let people know they're joking but there's a lot of misinterpretation that happens on email a lot of times people feel that the uh, the, the email um, communication is kind of cold and it doesn't um, convey lots of different parts of the interaction that would be there if they were speaking in person say for example because you know if we're meeting face to face I can I can read your body language and I can 
try and get more of a personal sense of what's going on. But there are also times when we meet face to face, and this happens particularly with students, where they're not comfortable sharing something with me in a face to face meeting, but they're perfectly comfortable sending me an email and saying this. You know, it, critical feedback is one of those things. Um, and I personally am. There are times when I'm more comfortable expressing something in an email because I know it's going to hit the student hard and I don't necessarily want to see their reaction because it's, it's uncomfortable for both of us. One thing that email has done and I've noticed is you can't judge tone of emails. And some emails that students send out are extremely offensive to professors of what they're saying in it. And if you actually write it out loud, you probably say, well, I probably shouldn't, wouldn't say that in person. And I've gotten a number of emails that are, that you really would, I wouldn't send to anybody, but I've gotten them from students because it just feels like, well, it's this anonymity of email. I can send it, I can say whatever I want, and I can complain as much as I want, and accuse as much as I want of certain things. And it's just one of those things that's much better to do certain things like that in person than